In this video, I will share several tips for post-processing of Abacus result, which can help you with better visualization and reporting of the results. I will show how you can set the scale for deformation, how to adjust data points in a plot to have less or more points in a curve, how to increase the legend font size so that you can read the results clearer, how you can use selection tool to your advantage and save time, how to isolate the model segment so that you can look into the portion you are interested in and inspect the model better. I will finally uh, give you tips on how you can print high quality model image for your reports. So let's start with setting the scale of deformation. This is a 70 millimeter long dog bone specimen. So this end is fixed and I have pulled this end by 30 millimeters. So let's see how the deformation looks. So if you notice carefully, the deformation doesn't seem to be 30 millimeters. When we compare that from here to here, distance is 70 millimeters. So this happens because this deformation is not according to the scale. To change that, you can go to common options. And here, usually the deformation scale factor is auto-computed. So sometimes it could be the deformation that you actually see in the results are uh, 100 times larger or there could be some cases where the deformation that you see here is uh, 10 or 20 times lower than actual deformation. To see what is the actual deformation, go to uniform and make sure this value is one and apply. And if you do that, so any deformation that you get in this model is the actual deformation. So that means if this is from here to here, this is 70 millimeter. So after the deformation from here to here, as we have elongated it by 30 millimeters, the distance now should be 100 millimeters. And that is also by the scale. Our second tip is to adjust data points in a plot. In this model, I have requested for the force and displacement response of this particular end. And the force displacement response in the history output is recorded in the results. So if I look at the force response in this particular direction, that looks like this. And I can see this uh, force curve over time is uh, piecewise. This is somewhat uh, reasonable, but in some cases you could have this curve such that there is a straight line and only maybe two or three lines that comprise this particular curve. So if you are interested to have a smooth curve, you have to make sure several things that I am going to show you now. So how many points you have here as these uh, results come from the history output. So first we will look into the history output. Uh, and it says that uh, I want the output or the points in the curve at every n increment and n is equal to one. That means every increment I will have one point. If this is the setting I have at history output, so note that it is important to know how many increments I have in the step or in the step one. So if in step one, I have about 100 increments. So that means 100 points of this force response will be recorded in the history output. So once I have this particular settings, next thing I have to check that how many increments I actually have in step one. So let's go ahead and check that. So step one, so inside I will go to incrementation and uh, here actually for this particular curve, I know that the maximum incrementation was 0 0.1. So if I, in incrementation, if I make the maximum incrementation size to be 0 0.01 and uh, as my step time is one second, so I will need 100 of this maximum incrementation to reach to one second. So each increment is 0 0.01. So next increment uh, uh, time would be 0 0.02. Next one is 0 0.03. And I need total 100 incrementation to reach my step time. On side note, I should say that uh, by this particular setting, it makes sure that I will have at least 100 uh, increments and by that at least 100 points in my force versus time curve. It could be even more, but I will have at least 100. So if it is what you want, so you can set 
your initial and maximum to be like that so of course the maximum is the one which dictates how many increments at least you should have uh, also note that by default this number is 100 so please put a couple of zero because it doesn't hurt it, it can only help to prevent your job from throwing up errors so once i have these settings and uh, if i run this particular job again as the number of increment is higher this job actually took a bit longer to complete but now I can see it is successfully completed. So I will right click result. And now in result, uh, in this uh, job name, history output inside, I will see the force response. And this time I can see this force response is more smooth compared to what we had earlier. And this all happened because we have edited uh, our in, into our history output and as well as into the step the next tip is to increase the legend font size for example let's say you have uh, your one misses stress distribution and the value of this distribution can be assumed by these legends and uh, the values here and you want to have a screenshot of this uh, particular region or want to print this uh, deformation and the stress values for a report and uh, these numbers are not large enough to be clear in your report to make them larger uh, you can go to viewport and then viewport annotation option and in here in legend you can set the font so here the font size is 14. By default, the font size is eight, which means this becomes very, very small. So it's um, recommended you use either 14 or 18 and apply that such that in your report, this legend is clearly visible. The next tip is uh, to use the selection tool to your advantage. I will explain this with some examples. Let's say now I am in the assembly and i am interested to select these and these two lines so of course i can go and select it exactly to those those lines also that one so this is one way of selecting or i can be a bit clever and in this selection tool i can select edge and drag a box and as i drag a box only the edges would be selected so these and these edges are selected and by that i can save time and be quick with defining my boundary conditions or so on similarly if i am interested to select these and these two points uh, i can go and uh, select vertices and uh, draw a box and it will make sure that only these two vertices are selected by default it would be all in your selection tool and whenever you try to select anything it's gonna select uh, everything and make a mess of it next a short tip on how you can isolate some part of the model for better inspection and how you can do it faster for example I have two layers of element there could be multiple layers of element and I want to get rid of uh, one layer and see what happens inside the other layer. So to remove, for example, here, the first layer of element out of here and see what happens in this uh, back layer of element and the front face of that we need to remove this layer of elements. So one way of doing it, for example, we can select all those elements one by one and then when all of them are selected, we can go here and then uh, it says remove selected if i click here so this element is removed so i can go back and show everything but instead of doing that i can say that uh, remove selected and then what to select you can see that how it uh, selects randomly usually by default uh, it would be a face or cell or anything and uh, by angle when you try to select it will only select this particular face not the layer of element so if you are interested to remove this face you can do that but if you are interested to remove the whole layer of element you can go to element and as this is by angle and by default is 20 so you can keep that if this is by angle so that means if you select anywhere in here it will select the whole of this layer of element not only when these uh, elements are in a straight line it could be a carved body but still if you select elements by angle it will select a particular layer of elements and then you don't have to do them individually so you can uh, use uh, any of those it could be nodes 
it could be face sail or so on uh, as you need and uh, select by angle and uh, by using this feature you can save a lot of time and select a particular feature or particular portion of the model that you need to for example here i have select remove so done and by that the first layer of element is removed here i can see what happens in the inner layer of the element faces so be creative and uh, you can use this trick uh, especially for selection and uh, removing or replacing a part of your geometry and look inside the model wherever you are interested finally uh, printing high quality model image for uh, your report for example so let's say i want to print this particular model so it's better that i make it of uh, proper size which is reasonable so let's say i want to print this particular and i don't want to print these and these of course for that you can go to viewport annotation option and say that you don't want compass which is this and you don't want this triad which is this so apply so everything is here so one way is of course doing the print screen but if you want to have it a high quality image so do ctrl p for printing in your keyboard so i am pressing ctrl plus p and then i have this uh, pop-up so here not printer i will save it in a file i will do it in png png is good i will untick this reduce to 256 colors and then i will select a folder here browse the folder where i want to save use to my temp folder give it a name like dog bone for example okay and click apply and by that i have a high quality image in the temp folder so i will open that and show you how this image looks so here is the dog bone image so this is uh, basically quite high quality and uh, they look quite good in the report when compared to getting this picture by a print screen probably it's relevant to show that how you can change the background to white to do that you have to go to view and then graphics option in graphics option this is the viewport background color so it could be a gradient something like that or it could be solid and solid color of course you can choose what is the solid color so here i have chosen it to be white and hence it's white and by that i make sure that i get a good quality image that stand out in the white background 